this uh, this here is a, a bag of mixed clay that we uh, used at the last firing of the wood fire film. We didn't have any fire clay to make the uh, the wadding. Uh, all I'd got was a bag of crank, and uh, Alex Schumacher bought uh, a bag of porcelain. Uh, so what we did was we've mixed two extremes. We mixed porcelain with crank and uh, wedged it up on the floor, which is very dusty. It's got all sort of floor impurities in it, which might be quite nice to experiment with. What we're doing now, I'm just going to wedge it up a bit further because it was a bit hit and miss at the last firing. Be interesting to see what uh, how it throws first of all. So wood off the uh, wood fired floor or the floor outside the wood fired kiln. I don't normally like throwing with porcelain, it's a bit, a bit like throwing with cream cheese to be honest with you. I like something with a bit of teeth. And there we have it, that's one piece ready. Wedge this one up a bit more. When you're wedging clay or mixing clay or kneading clay, whatever you want to call it, you wedge it for as long as you think it's enough. And then wedge it for another five minutes. And that usually is really enough. So I'm going to uh, stop the video in here, wedge that for another five minutes, boil it up, and then we'll have a look at what it's like to throw. Okay. Right, this is the first uh, first piece of that uh, stoneware crank and porcelain mixture. It still feels a bit gritty, but obviously that's particles in the crank. But it's got a lot more plasticity to it. We'll just see how it throws. the base just gonna do a couple of little T balls here well biggish T balls with a slight difference well it throws really nicely Slow down a little bit here. I think I've found that my throwing gets a lot freer. If you've seen the previous one about throwing with thought and What I'm going to do with these now, because I quite like the idea, I did some, 
I'm throwing the other day, and I just I'll just turn over the edge. basically leave it like that. the rim. The last th uh, tea balls I did, I didn't really th smooth off the rim too much. Uh, but when the glaze, when it, when it dries out and then when you fire it, the, the edge goes quite rough because it was crank. So um, when the glaze is on it, it, on a couple of the pots it was a bit thin on the edge and it was the, the, the rim was rough so it's not very nice to drink out of. Just uh, smooth it off a little bit. That's the first one. Got an idea. We're back in a few minutes. What I'm going to do is, what I've got here is some shells that we use for firing. That's uh, some kind of limpet. That's an ordinary shell. There's a bit of a shell here with a bigger, a bigger uh, groove on it. And I'm just going to. Put an impression in there like that, and do the usual. find anything. There we go, first one. The reason I'm using the shells is because um, an air bubble in this. The reason I'm using the shells is I saw some um, results of some pots that people had used shells to stand their pots on in the wood fire kiln, and it leaves an impression in the clay in the actual uh, wadding. I thought I would just incorporate that into the pot beforehand if I could. Uh, oh, George, back again. What's the matter? Hmm? What's up? I oh, know, get the door shut, isn't it? It's cold today. Himself open it then. Wow. What? Open it. Don't go out. That's it. Try and open it. That's a good boy. Oh dear. All right. We'll have to help him. Otherwise, he'll never leave me alone. Go on. Go on. Don't want to go out now. It's raining. Without him, 
porcelain in this clay it is a little bit sticky. About it. And then we use the shell. Give it one minute. Not very shell like, is it? I was going to put a, a line in it, but I think that would detract from it a little bit. Maybe. Nice one, that. Good enough. If you notice, then I had the wheel going. If people who have, have trouble getting their parts off the wheel, cut it off with a wire and then just have the wheel going slightly and as you put pressure on with your fingers the pot releases itself it, this the wheel sort of rather than twisting the pot off the wheel and you can deform it if you just hold the pot still and then move the wheel the wheel will twist itself off the pot um, do one more and always edit it out if it's no good or if it's a bit too long Brave the weather. Maybe quite a quite a chunky base on this because I want a nice foot ring on it afterwards. Getting to slow the wheel down. What I normally do is put a block of wood underneath the, the foot pedal, and that way, that way I can't uh, make it go too fast. This is dragging here. I've not put so much water on. I've let it drag, and what it does is it tends to uneven the rim intentionally. You can feel it dragging there. You can see how the rim's bobbing up and down. It doesn't really matter because what I'm going to do is turn it over like that. Squeeze the air out. You never trap air inside, and even if there is a little bit of air trapped inside, it never blows up if you dry it properly. piece of clay. I'm not even going to mix it into a ball. Press it on. Use my, use my uh, shell. A bit of de detail. Clean the water at the bottom. I 
wheel for a four wheel. Now we'll just leave it pressed in. Less is more, as they say. No good talking about it unless you do it. What I shall do with this when we fire it next is I'll, I will wax this and then when I dip it in the glaze or pour the glaze over it, it'll not stick to it so when it fires it'll be a nice toasted wad shape, wad mark. Okay. Right, I'll just show you that uh, lifting off bit again. Fingers. So, if the wheel's going, and you just grab it, you see, it twists itself off the bottom. I'm hardly touching that, and it doesn't deform it. Oh, so they have it. Next time.